right, hello, and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine, and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today, I am delighted to be joined by Kajal Shahani, who is up, up in Northern California, just up the coast there in the Bay Area. How are you doing, Kajal? I'm doing great. How are you? Excellent, excellent. And what we're... Uh, and uh, your cousin is, uh, is an expert in, um, in buying and selling homes and consulting on home selling tactics. And what we're going to talk about today is mindset for sales or sales mindset, which is kind of a favorite topic of mine now, because I think so. Would you agree? I think people are becoming more and more aware how powerful mindset is, because back in the old days, people used to go oh, positive mental attitude and people would go and go, yeah, yeah, whatever. But now I think people are really tapping into how mindset is such a fundamental part of of our success or lack of there yes absolutely i mean i just feel like we're bombarded with so much information these days um coaches are becoming so much um, i would say more commonplace in the sales world um, but it's because we're bombarded with so much whether it's the news or whether it's the market's going up and down in real estate, the interest rates, the stock market, everything affects the market. Um, and buying a home is such an emotional decision that I think when it comes down to it, the mindset of the salesperson has to be so strong to be able to deal with all this, that it's just, it's becoming um, mandatory in my, in, in my world, I'd say. Yeah, no, I, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think to, to the point that you just raised there about that we're so bombarded, and I think that's part of the problem is that we allow ourselves to be bombarded by all of these things going on rather than be sort of a little bit more dispassionate and selective in the information that we consume. Right, absolutely. I mean, the news has so much to do with it. And I think all of our coaches and all of our mindset um, gurus say, don't pay attention to the news, right? Uh, but there's a reason for that. And it and it definitely takes a toll on your mindset for sure, especially the past year and a half when all we heard was negative news. Yeah, and and, uh, and I agree. And uh, I, I think today that uh, the, the news is not designed to inform you today. The yeah. news is designed to provoke you. It's designed to provoke a reaction. And therefore, if you are, to my mind, if you are consuming stuff that's there to provoke you, and it really doesn't make that much difference to your day, right? Yes. Why are um, you doing it? Yeah, absolutely. And it's that sometimes we put on the news for white noise, but then you're still, you're still absorbing all of it. I mean, I find myself doing it sometimes too. And I'm like, why am I, why am I putting this on white noise? I should put it on HGTV or something. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly, exactly. And, and just as we talk about selling uh, in, the real estate, uh, in the real estate industry, as you say, it's a very emotional purchase on, well, it's emotional purchase on buyer and, and, and seller's part. But, um, but obviously um, from a buyer point of view, it's a hugely emotional, um, it's a hugely emotional undertaking. So how do you, how does a salesperson really help assuage those fears and make help people become more relaxed with the process? For sure. So much of it is handholding and it really depends on the clientele as well. Some people just need more handholding than others. Um, but going into the process, knowing that that's our job is so important because we should safely assume everybody that's going to process has never done it before. They could be a second time home buyer, third time home buyer, but every search has its different, I would say, components to it that require handholding. Um, so just being there for them, a lot of times I just have calls. I've scheduled calls with my current clients. Um, and a lot of times it's not anything that they really need to talk about except more hey, this item showed up in an inspection report. It's really freaking me out. What do you think? And the, that's, I would say, the majority of my conversation more than anything else. And the other thing is, I think with the market the way it is right now, um, I do find that people need hand-holding with being patient. The way the market is, you could go zero months to six months to eight months and not have an offer accepted. To have that strong mindset as a buyer, as a seller, as a realtor, and being able to communicate patience is so important. Yeah, and, and I, I, everything you say is absolutely spot on. And I, mean, I know somebody recently who went through a process where unfortunately there was a major issue with the house found. And so it delayed 
you know, it was a year and a half process for, oh, yeah. for everything to get sorted out and highly, highly emotional. I think sometimes people underestimate, um, you know, quite how emotional these things can be. So therefore, as you say, as, as a seller, you first and foremost have to have to um, reassure them that you're on their side and you're going to figure it out and everything is going to be good. Yeah, absolutely. And and truly speaking, you should be as a salesperson, you should be the source of solutions versus creating more anxiety and problems. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. And so how do people I mean, you were, for instance, like you're up in the Bay Area now where let's face it, house prices are kind of off the charts, a bit like they are down here. So uh, so w- when you work or when your colleagues work with, with buyers, I mean, this is even more emotional, right? Because now they're paying like a huge premium. Some of them are stretching themselves very thin, yes. leveraging themselves to to purchase the home. Um, I mean, we always have, we always, we're always a little nervous and, you know, sometimes yeah. buyer remorse, but when you have that additional thing of the expense of it all, the huge expense of it all, how do you, how do you help people in that situation. Oh yes, and this this does, and you kind of nailed it in our market. Um, I mean, what things are selling for for three, four million dollars, and you look at the house and you think, okay, perspective. Like for us, n- none of these houses are like, oh my god, amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, all that stuff. It, it's just it's become so common to spend two, three, four million dollars in the Bay Area to just get into a neighborhood. Um, and still, after spending two, three, four million dollars, you're still upgrading the house. There's still some issues with the house. Um, I just sold one in the three million dollar range that needed a new roof, kitchen, bathrooms, the whole gamut. Um, I think my client's going to end up spending like four hundred thousand on a full gut remodel. A roof itself is like eighty grand on those houses. Um, so I, I think the I would say I mean I rarely deal with a pure buyer remorse. But I think the reason why that is, is because the client has to be so ready in this market to go all in with the offer that if they're not all in, I don't even feel comfortable writing the offer. Like if you don't love this house, if you're not going to be happy with the acceptance in this market, don't write an offer. And that mitigates so much buyer's remorse when they actually get accepted. Um, And I think that's the key of being able to jump into a market like this, because there's really no time your deposits due within 24 hours of acceptance, the deposit has to be wired no personal check a lot of times. I mean you have it's so fast forward at this point that if you're not ready, then you should just browse, (laughs) you know, like watch the market. (laughs) Yeah, and and I think you, you raise a really good point here is that that is that the preparation work you do up front. So like as a salesperson and, and there's somebody guiding um, buyers and that is, you know, helping them prepare up front to your point there. Okay, you're ready to spend, uh, you know, 3 million on this, but do you have the other 400,000 in order to right. do the renovation? Are you going to be okay with a long, you know, who knows how long that'll take if it's a good job a year, maybe? Um, maybe maybe more Um, so I think the more preparation you do and if that ends up with the person going yeah you're right I'm not ready for this well that's a lot better than you having an an unhappy customer later on oh for sure for sure I have had and not even in the higher price point but even in the one to one and a half which most of my first time home buyers land in that price point um, there's a lot more buyers remorse there because they're first time home buyers Mm -hmm. however um, preparing them for, hey, you're buying this house, there's going to be ups and downs, downs when you purchase. You have to be prepared for that. And if you're not, just sit it out. That's that's kind of my way of dealing with buyer's remorse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no, especially for first-time buyers, if you think about it, because yeah. if you've been used to either your parents taking care of everything or your landlord taking care of everything, um, I think that's sometimes a a big surprise to people with their first home when yeah stuff happens that's the yeah. stuff happens and and it's yeah. yours and now and you own it so I think you have to be in an ownership mindset uh, For sure. also when when you purchase to make sure like you're not later on like oh who's going to help me here and you say well no yeah, it's actually your house <laughs> absolutely absolutely <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, um, so because of all of that, as you said, like everything is moving at light speed because you've got such a hot market there. I mean, how do you how do you balance that? Like the need to go fast and get everything done with the need to to prepare and make sure this is the right fit. 
gosh. So the inventory has so much to do with this comment. The inventory is super low. Inventory is so low. I mean, if I'm showing houses, I'm probably like two is a lot to see in some price points right now. Right. So um, going through, I would say making sure you know mostly where the house is going to land even before you show it to prepare the client's mindset, right? So if something's listed at for one, two, and it's in a certain pocket, I know it's going to hit one, five. We might not even take a look at it at that point. So having that conversation with the client before going in has like, I mean, it, it alleviates so much, but then also the, the flip side is, okay, some clients just want to see what one, two to one, five buys them. Right. And I'm okay with that. Absolutely. Let's take a look at it. Let's see. And a lot of these guys, they're, they're able to afford it, but at one, two, if it requires work and their ideal house is going to land at one, five, that might not even fit the bill. Um, so having that conversation before looking at the house, or at least taking a look at that house with that mindset versus, Ooh, I'm going to really get this at one, two, um, Preparing that way, I would say alleviates so, so much of that anxiety mindset of like, oh, this is listed at one, two, I want it at one, two. Well, if it's not realistic, they're going to go in with such a different mindset, which helps so much. Yeah, no, I think that's, that's a great point uh, as well. And I think also being realistic um, when you, you know, helping buyers be realistic, for instance, like if you if there's cash buyers come in, yeah, they're probably going to trump you, right? Um, oh, so yeah. you just have to be prepared for those things. And yeah, you may have all your finances in order. You may have your mortgage, your pre-approved, all of that good stuff, but know that there are circumstances where, because I mean, if you're a seller you and the cash buyer is is uh, matches the best offer, you're going to take that every day. Oh yeah, absolutely. Although I do have to say that um, there are so many ways to trump a cash buyer. And a lot of it is just putting more money um, mm -hmm. putting a higher deposit and all that stuff. So that's actually a good point. Cause I recently got one accepted, um, where we were higher than the cash. We ended up getting it, but there were tweaks we did to our offer, like higher EMD earnest money deposit, um, things that we offered rent back where the cash buyer just wanted the house in 10 days. And we knew that the seller wanted some, some time to move. So right. getting that information before showing the home helps tremendously while you're walking through the house yeah so there absolutely so therefore what you have what you've just outlined there is 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 great from a sales point of view from a really understanding understanding the seller in this stage in this case like making sure you understand all of their circumstances therefore you you do have the opportunity as you said to trump the cash buyer because you you work your offer around the needs of the seller Exactly. So sometimes, yes, cash is, is always the preferred, but if they're not giving the terms that seller wants, there's a little angle that you can kind of throw in there with your offer. Yeah, no, ab absolutely. And, um, and just, I mean, when you're, when you're operating in a, in a market like this, as you said, when inventory is, is low, how do you keep yourself, your own mindset, like how do you keep yourself focused and positive and, and all of that when you know times it's got to be frustrating when the prices are so high and the inventory is so low it is absolutely and it's very challenging because you're dealing with like a buyer's mindset which is polar opposite than a seller's mindset right now mm -hmm. i deal with a lot of sellers that are surprisingly unrealistic in this market too where they're like uh, okay you know the, the comparable sold for let's say 1.5 but hey, the market's so fast and it's, everyone's telling me it's a seller's market. I want 2 million. I've had sellers like that. Um, I've had buyers that said, hey, the market's changing. The market's changing. Well, no, because you're speaking to someone in a different state. So no, the market's not changing. <laughs> um, but but keeping yourself um, baseline, right? Just, just staying on baseline as a realtor. Um, honestly, I do listen to a lot of podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and realizing that, Every real realtor is going through very similar, similar deals, similar um, marketplace where you have, I have my network of a support system amongst my friends and my realtors. And so bouncing ideas and scenarios off of each other keeps you really grounded because you realize, oh, everyone's going through this. The other day, one of my listings had an offer date and I didn't get multiple offers. And I literally was like, what? Like, did that just happen? So I immediately group texted the realtors that I banter with and asked if they were dealing with the same scenario. And it kind of normalized me a little bit. I was like, Ooh, okay. So we're just having a little funky week or, you know, those kind of things. 
Um, that listening to, um, I'm a huge, huge um, audible listener. I, I mean, I love listening to audiobooks. Um, my most favorite recent one is Mel Robbins' High Five. Highly, highly, highly recommend it. It keeps your mindset so grounded. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so making sure you kind of listen to the good stuff, keeping the news out of it, mm-hmm. and and just just bantering with the right people, right? Being kind of being in the space of your co realtors are all going through the same thing. So make sure you vocalize. Um, I attend my weekly meetings. You know that all of that helps because you're not. You could be very alone as a realtor right? You could kind of get stuck in your head as a realtor. You deal with good clients, bad clients, difficult clients, happy clients all day long. So you could be all over the spectrum if you let yourself. Um, But putting the good stuff in helps. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think uh, as you outlined there, having, uh, you know, a network of peers and mentors and people like that, people you can bounce ideas off. Yeah, because it can be lonely. And I think any sales job can can feel lonely, uh, lonely at times. uh, and and then the you know the the other part of it too is um, you know obviously staying staying focused and and staying on top of it. But you're also in an industry where you know regulation and legislation and different things. All of that's happening constantly, and it's a lot of it is sometimes localized, sometimes state, sometimes national. So it, it's quite a complex world that you have to keep up with these days. Oh, absolutely. I mean, any little drop of news of stock market or interest rates rattle people and then you'll, your phone's going to be ringing like, oh, what's the market doing? Um, so so just kind of staying baseline is so important and not letting the news rattle you. Yeah. And uh, and uh, I mean, I guess it's the, the same old story, though, isn't it? Like, you know, there's some areas that are always going to retain their value and there's some up and coming areas and there's some what yeah. look like up and coming areas that may not turn into up and coming areas. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what, what would be your last piece of advice to somebody, particularly a, a salesperson who's used to operating on their own, kind of like you are as a realtor? Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, not getting sucked in to what's happening around you, but being in the know of what's happening around you is so, so crucial. Um, and and not letting yourself get sucked into the client's emotions. That's so mm-hmm. important. Yeah, no, I think that that's a great point is not getting sucked into the client's emotions, because I think sometimes people uh, confuse empathy and sympathy, right? So they start to, um, you know, they rather than, you know, empathize means, yes, you put yourself in their shoes, you try and understand them, but you but doesn't mean you have to agree with everything doesn't mean you can't deliver, you know, hard messages, you just obviously deliver them in a in a better way. Um, So I think the empathy part is very, is very important, but not to confuse it with sympathy. Yes, absolutely. Well, listen, this has been this has been fantastic, uh, Kajal. Um, all of uh, Kajal's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself. Absolutely. So I've been a realtor in the Bay Area for 18 years, born and raised in the Bay Area. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Kajal Shahani Real Estate, Facebook, Kajal Shahani Real Estate. Feel free to DM me. I will personally respond. Perfect. That's great. Well, listen, thank you again. And thank you for watching and listening. And I'll see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you so much.